Okay, everybody's still in. We are now recording. All right. Welcome to Protection and Policy for Monday, September 27th. Uh, we will take the roll call. Alder Stoyer, I am here. Alder Lefebvre. Here. Alder Stevens. Present. And Alder Vanderleest. Here. All present and accounted for. Who's running the meeting today? Hi. So uh, Mary is still here. Today. Mary. So, okay. All so right. Please, so please be patient. Um, All right. We're uh, we're pulling from we're pulling from Mary. Believe me. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead on to approval of the agenda. Okay. Uh, we need a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Motion approve. Okay, motion by Vanderleest, seconded by Stevens. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. Sorry. Mark, I was just going to yeah. mention if, if you wanted okay. to mention anybody that's in the public that, uh, you know, when our next city council meeting is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I will. Okay. All right. Are we ready, Mary? Yes, we are. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes. I need a motion. Motion to motion. approve. Motion by Stevens, seconded by Lefebvre. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. And like Alder Vanderly said, any of these items that we talk about today in regular business will be going to for final voting on, at City Council, which will be Tuesday, October 5th at 6 p.m. And we're all set for you. Thank you. All right. Regular business. Number one, it's consideration with possible action on an appeal by Jessica Bodoin regarding the denial of her operator's license previously held over at the August 23rd, 2021 and September 7th, 2021 protection and policy meetings. Uh, I, I kind of know what staff and uh, staff will say. Who's talking? Alderman Burnett. Yeah, please uh, mute yourselves, please. <laughs> right, um, so we, uh, again, I, I'll ask Law. Well, who is talking? Okay, please. We have a meeting going on. <laughs> so uh, just wanted to let you know that for the first item, the appeal for the simple class. Um, she uh, was notified by the clerk's office um, on the 22nd of September. Of course, she did attend last um, the PBD from two weeks ago. So she did provide uh, a recommendation letter. She did not forward that to her office. Celestine, so, we're having a hard time hearing you. You're kind of breaking up. So I, your, your communication's not going through. All right. I will go to my office. I'll be right back. So, Attorney Bungert, um, you know, I, we've gone through this twice with on this situation, and I know basically what law will say and what will the police will say. So, I'm, I'm just wondering if we need to still do that just to get to the point. The chairman, yes, go ahead. Um, we've uh, this is the third time this has been in front of us, so we understand what happened the last two times. Oh, we do, and, we do. And, and but I, it's not just that's not just for us; it's for everybody. Yeah. yeah but, and, and thank you, Chair Stoyer. I just wanted what I was saying before. Uh, forgive me for not um, being close to the microphone, um, but Miss Ms. Bodoin was connect contacted by our office on the twenty second, and of course she had attended the meeting, knowing full well that the committee wanted her to present a letter of 
recommendation. As I said, our office did contact her, reminding her of the date of today's meeting and the requirement for a letter of recommendation, and we did not receive it. Thank you. Oh, interesting. All right, uh, committee, have at it. Mark, Mark. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, Alder uh, Lafayette. Yeah, I guess then, yeah, there's no, uh, n nothing that we can do that deny her, yeah, uh, I, her license as she has not come forward with for. That's how I feel. Anybody else? Uh, if, if that's the case, bring, bring forward a motion. Bring forward a motion if you. I'm like, I'm like here. What's that? Uh, uh, we could we could probably hold it for thirty days and give her time to get <sighs> together. Well, I, you know, I think at this, you know, we've been more than patient on this. I feel, you know, we can vote accordingly, but uh, I would. You know, she's had two opportunities. I, you know, if it's so important, I think you really need to come forward and try to at least let us know or be at the meeting. You know, and I, I have, I'm pretty patient, but I think right now my patience is running a little thin on this. So I, I would entertain a motion on this. Motion to hold for Thanks, Mike. Okay. okay. So, all right. Uh, Alder Vanderlis brought a motion up to hold for 30 days. Uh, do we have a second on that? Okay, that dies for a lack of a second. So we have another. Do we have another motion? Two yes, things, Mike. Mark. Pardon? I'm sorry. Uh, two things. Well, I'll say one thing. Uh, she was supposed to get us the letters, and the city clerk, uh, clerk's office, they contacted her, and she still did not comply. So there's nothing okay. else we can do. Well, then, so, uh, did, uh, did all no the motion. students want to make the motion? No. No, I'll you can, make, you can, I'll make, make, you can make it. Okay, I'll make Go a ahead. motion that we deny it. Okay, do we have a second? I will second. Okay. All right. All, all any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Alder Vanderleest. I said aye. Die. Okay. All right. That passes unanimously. She'll have to okay, reapply. Right. Exactly. That's fine. She, okay. All right. That's taken care of. So we'll wait, wait to move on to our two. She was on there. She got off. She what? She was on. Is she, oh, she, is was, she, at, is she at the meeting? I should have asked. She was at the meeting, but she's no longer here. Well, it's not like we've been here that long, nine minutes. I mean, anyway, whatever. Okay, are we ready to move on? Yes. Okay, number two, consideration with possible action on an appeal by Jason Newmeyer regarding the denial of his operator's license previously held at the September 7th, 2021 Protection of Policy Committee meeting. Again, staff. Thank you, Chair Stoyer. Likewise, go ahead. Can, I, can I object one moment, please? Sure, go ahead. Um, whoever is hosting the meeting, they are unmuting me. I ask that you please do not unmute me. Okay. We Thank need you. to hear. We need to hear you. Uh, I like I, this, I, but I can hit the face bar. So. This is Lieutenant Mahoney who's hosting the meeting, and I've been sitting here. I don't click anything unless I'm asked to, so I don't know why it's becoming unmuted, but it's not through yeah. me. Uh, it's coming across the screen as host that has unmuted you. Well, I like the scenery where you're at, so maybe that's part of it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, all right. So where are we now? What did I say? So we're at nine, number two, uh, Mr. Newmeyer, Jason Newmeyer, likewise Chair Stoyer. Um, mm -hmm. The clerk's office sent him a communication on the 22nd of September to attend the meeting, provide a letter of recommendation. Uh, we have not received anything in the clerk's office. Um, and as uh, before, he attended the meeting two weeks ago and was informed at that meeting by the committee that he needed to provide that letter of recommendation. Thank you for that. I, you know, we've, we've had many of these uh, situations come before us and normally the folks will have letters with them at the time or they understand the rules and regs. So um, Alder Lefebvre. Um, it looks like there's a mic. Is this? 
it with his hand raised, wanted to Mike's speak. Here. Mike's here for my agenda item on the golf cart. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Then he has to wait. Okay. You got to save on that. Okay. So, okay. Um, is is Mr. Newmeyer here by any chance at the meeting? Clerk Jeffries, you said he's not here, right? Uh, I do not see him here on the Zoom list. Okay. Committee? Make a motion to receive and place on file. I suppose we can, is uh, Attorney Bunger, to receive and place in file or deny, is there a big difference? Is it a little bit of the same or what? Um, not really. Um, at this point, it needs to be an action decision. Yes, um, that's what I'm it's saying. a request for an appeal. Right. So right. it's either uh, an approve the appeal or a deny the appeal right. or hold it to another date. Okay. Does anybody want to change that motion? I'll change it okay. to denial. Well, I'll hold it. Alder Vanderlees, do you want to withdraw your motion? I'll withdraw, or you? I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. Thank you. Alder Lefebvre? Okay. Okay. So, what do you, Alder Lefebvre, you said you, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Um, yeah, I can make I can make that motion, or if John uh, Vanderlees, if he wants to make, you know, make a new motion. No. Kathy, you're good with your motion. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I'll make the motion. I'll second to deny. It. You <laughs> motion, motion to deny. <laughs> okay. Motion by Lefebvre to deny. Seconded by Stevens. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. That passes unanimously. I'm all set. Okay, thank you, Mary. Number three, consideration with possible action on application for a class A liquor and class A beer license for Sarpanch dot or Inc. Military Marathon at 1300 South Military Avenue with a licensed premise description as gas station and convenience store, currently licensed as Friends Convenience Inc. staff. Uh, yep. Yep, You're I know. Muted. I'm muted. I'm muted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no objection from the lot of Okay. Partners. And please? Uh, please concur. Motion. And there's a motion by Vanderlee to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Stevens. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimously. That's in my district, Mark. That's why I know the folks that are running it. They're doing a good job. Okay, I've been there too. Is that on the corner, John? Yes, it is. Okay. Vanderleest Corners. <laughs> All right. Let, let us know when you're ready, Mary. I am ready. Thank you. Okay, number four. Consideration with possible action on an application for a Class B real license for Scott's Sub East Green Bay LLC, Scott's Sub East Green Bay at 810 South Huron, road with a licensed premise description as the beer ordered right as you walk in at the counter by the POS system and in storage room. Staff. Staff has no objection. Police. Uh, the police reviewed this. It's mainly a restaurant. They're just asking to be allowed to serve beer if someone orders a sub while they're there. Um, so we have no objection to it either. Yeah, I've never quite heard a, heard a, a request quite like that, but Interesting. All right, so we have law and police weighing in on that. Staff, or I'm not staff, I'm sorry. I'm a com make committee. A motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, Stevens approves. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Vanderleest. Um, okay, Alder, Alder Lefebvre, you wanted to say something. I just got a question uh, for Lieutenant Mahoney. Um, okay, so they get the beer. The beer has to be, because it's a kind of a takeout then they would have to um, have the beer has to be contained, right? Correct. It's a class B, um, like Attorney Bungard said. A class A is the easy A away beer okay. or bar. So they would have to consume it on pre so, premise. It's, okay, it's, thanks. it's essentially a restaurant, no different than any other place that if you wanted a glass of wine or beer with dinner, it's a restaurant. They're just asking to be able to serve uh, beer with their sub sandwiches that you eat there. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 
Aye. All opposed? That passes unanimously. Alder Stevens, I hope you're not driving. It looks like you're a passenger. And I'm all set for you. Okay. All right, number five, consideration of possible action on an application for a Class B combination license by Gallagher's Acquisition LLC, Gallagher's Pizza at 2655 West Mason Street with a license premise description as front dining, stored and closed next to bar, additional dining located in back room, currently licensed as Gallagher's Pizza Inc. Staff. Uh, yes, so um, let me see. So law department doesn't have any objection um, for the agent on the application, um, Vanessa Miller. She meets all the criteria um, under the statutes. However, one of the officers, um, Chad Miller does have a, um, was convicted for a felony in 1998. Um, he didn't receive any jail time, um, had three years probation, nothing subsequently. Um, so pursuant to statute, technically, um, he's not qualified um, to be on the license um, unless the committee determines that his offense no longer substantially relates because how much time has passed. Um, the law department just has taken the position that we generally just make a recommendation of, of not, of, of at least bringing it to the committee's attention. I do you know, understand that it's been quite some time since the offense. Again, it was 1998 and there's been nothing since, but we'd like mm -hmm. to defer that determination to the committee and council um, to confirm um, that it no longer okay. substantially relates and, um, and to move forward with approval. All right, I, I presume that's in the, in our agenda today or a packet. No, I, didn't, I didn't provide it because I'm not officially giving um, a denial recommendation. It's more uh -oh. of alerting the committee that technically um, the, the, the officer of the corporation that's, um, that's applying for the license does have um, a convicted, um, a conviction for a felony. I have a we, question. Go ahead, Mother Stevens. Go ahead, oh, Attorney Stevens. Hunter. If I heard you correctly, you're stating there has been no additional offenses since 1998? Correct. I'm comfortable with this. Thank you. All right, yeah, Alder I have a question. Thank you, Alder Lefebvre, go ahead. Uh, yeah, do, is there a reason, I mean, you're just letting us know, but there should be nothing that would, he hasn't had anything since then, that he went through his probation, he is basically done with everything? Okay. Um, that I, I don't have information on. I'm presuming yes, because it was so long ago. Um, the reason that I'm bringing it to your attention is because under the statute, it states, you know, qualifications of like what you need and what you shouldn't have in order to have a liquor license in the state of Wisconsin. One of those things is to not be a convicted felon. It doesn't provide for a conviction, not less than five years, not less than 10 years. It just says, if you're a convicted felon, you're precluded. But it also has the caveat that the offense has to be for something that substantially relates to the license activity. And that um, has been interpreted to mean if so much time has passed, that offense no longer substantially relates because it was so long ago, it doesn't really have an effect on the person's ability to um, to have the license and to run a successful and safe and lawful establishment. That is a determination that we leave to the alders to make. Right. Yeah. I think we need to talk to our legislature and kind of change it a little bit because, I mean, that's. Well. I, I know you can you can vote after you've gone through all your probation, so mm -hmm. this seems uh, kind of punitive in a way that somebody did something 20 years ago that it's still gonna be on your record right. and follow them around and they might not be yep. able to get 
you know, employment. Well, we can deal with that. I think we can deal with that, but that's a good point. Maybe we can work and on that. Um, to approve. Well, before, okay, Alder Vanderlees, a motion to approve. I just have a, a question of Attorney Bunger. Can we ask what the felony was? Not that you're saying yeah. it matters. Yep, um, it, for a manufactured delivery of THC. Okay. And another question, did he uh, offer this up or was that something that yeah. you were police? Yeah, that's a good point. Yes, that's a good yep. point Thank you for raising right. that. He did, he did voluntarily disclose that on okay. his application. So he was forthcoming okay. about the offense, um, you know, even though it was 20 some years ago. So. All right. Well, that, that's a, for me, that's a good thing that he at least came forward. Okay. All, all right, Alder Vanderlist, you uh, made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. By Stevens, any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? And again, I'll mention that uh, these all go to City Council on uh, Tuesday, October 5th at 6 p.m. Uh, the committee, uh, we do committee work here, but that goes for final vote and approval at City Council. So we'll wait, Mary, for you when you're ready. I'm all set. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Number six, a request by Alder Burnett for discussion with possible action and creating an ordinance to allow golf cart style vehicles on city roadways. Um, I know Alder Burnett is here, so I, I would defer to Alder Burnett to start this off. Yes, uh, Chairman, thank you. Thank you, committee. Uh, this probably is familiar. We had discussed this a few years back. Uh, traffic engineer Dave Hansen was looking into this. He pulled some interesting information from the state of Wisconsin, but then early day of the pandemic hit and the constituent who had offered this idea, you know, decided to hold off until bringing it up at a future time. Future time is now. I think it's appropriate to have this discussion the village of Swamico in Brown County recently passed a ordinance to allow golf carts on city streets there. The city of Oconto also allows this since 2016. And uh, I'm interested in, in looking into this possibility. One thing I will say in my district on the far west side, I have golf carts on city streets already. And if these are already being driven on city streets, I think it's a weakness of the city code that perhaps we do not have anything that specifies what is and is not permissible. One thing I will say is, you know, obviously there are a lot of people who hear this idea and think it's absurd and crazy. And I, I, I disagree with that. I don't think that golf carts would be appropriate on high speed highways or anywhere where traffic exceeds 25 miles per hour. But there are a lot of municipalities throughout the country that do allow golf carts on city streets with speed limits that do not exceed 25 miles per hour. So uh, those are my comments that I will preface with. I re respect the discussion here at the committee level, but one thing that I'd like to ask the chairman is if you would make a motion to open the floor to have Mr. Uh, Heaney on the line who would like to address the committee. I would, I would entertain that. Do we, do we have a motion to open the floor? Motion to open the floor. By Vanderlees, okay. we have seconded by Lefebvre. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimously. So Mr. Haney, just state your name and address uh, for the record and you may proceed with your discussion. All right, my name is Michael Feeney. Last name Feeney. is spelled F-E-E-N-E-Y. Okay. Uh, the address here is 2961 Shelter Creek Lane, Green Bay, okay. Wisconsin. All right, go ahead. Well, uh, you can discuss it a little bit. I remember this coming up some time back, a couple of years ago, and you might refresh our memories, but then uh, the committee may have questions to ask of you. So go ahead. Yeah, it was, it was almost uh, almost exactly two years ago now that I sat in front of the committee mm -hmm. and uh, put together a 20-page PowerPoint presentation, which probably wasn't appropriate for the time, but anyway, I did it. <laughs> uh, I guess that gets back to my sales days. Anyway, the reason I requested this is I'm looking for an ordinance from the city to approve um, small vehicles, and generically we're talking about golf carts, but I mean, technically they're broken into several categories, but golf carts to operate on city streets. Um, 
and within certain restrictions that would be agreed upon by the city engineers and others on the committee. Okay. Um, I, I guess one question I had, uh, and I can't, re I'm trying to remember the discussion. Um, was there ever, was there ever a talk of, you know, because it's not enclosed, these carts, I would think that uh, helmets, was that ever discussed at all? Or was that something that you had thought about or not? Uh, we did talk about safety equipment, but helmets was not part of the conversation. So okay. some of the safety equipment conversation that we had uh, were depending on, upon the vehicle and the hours of operation that would be allowed would be mm -hmm. such things as a slow moving vehicle sign, rear view mirror, uh, potentially lights for operation at night, uh, also directional lights, again, depending upon the operational hours allowed. Okay, and I think there might have been a, a couple of other things, but that was the, the basket. Right, I have one more question, then I'll get Alder Lefebvre, I'll get you right away. Um, so, so in a sense, you're looking, I don't know, you've been working with Alder Burnett on this as well, but uh, you're looking for this for the city, and you've done some research in other communities that have done this as well, and the success yeah, that they've had? Yeah, you know, trying, to stay, trying to stay close to home. Uh, actually, I've talked to the mayor of Ocanto in uh, December of 2019, I believe it was. And uh, Lloyd Heyer is his name, nice guy. I offered that his name up as a contact to some of the people on staff there to reach mm -hmm. out to him to try and gather more information. Uh, but um, Lloyd uh, went forward with this proposition in 2016 and uh, views it as being successful and a good thing overall for his community you know so and i noticed that and i heard from the committee when i was in front of them that safety was a concern so mm -hmm. i asked him about safety and 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 how he operated his uh, program within the city of Oconto, much smaller scale than the city of green bay i understand that uh, but he had a really common sense approach to it and he also had he was able to report that in the in the three plus years that they had operated golf carts on city streets, that they had no safety issues at all and issued no traffic citations at all over that period of time. Again, it's a small sample size, but I think right. it's, it's indicative of what we could expect uh, for that kind of approach here on, uh, in Green Bay. Okay, uh, I'll have Alder Lefebvre chime in now, but I, I do want the police to weigh in this. So Lieutenant Allen, you're there or not. I'd like to hear them as well, but go ahead, Alder Lefebvre. Uh, my question is, do the golf cart carts have seat belts? Is that for me to answer? I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. yes, you're still, the floor still open. Okay, um, so yes, golf carts typically would have seat belts and that can be a part of the safety equipment that's required as a part of the ordinance or the approval by the city. Okay. No. You're saying they typically do, but they do not all have them? No. Oh, a golf course, for example, uh, a golf cart on a golf course would not have a safety belt. That's a piece so, of equipment that can be installed, however. Okay. Because you're going to get people then, you hear golf carts, they're just going to go out with their golf carts. So I have oh, a very big concern on that. Okay. So that's if, it. if I could just. Um, expand upon what the proposition might look like. So true, I think that education on what's in and what's out of the ability to use these small vehicles on Green Bay city streets would have to be um, developed. And, the, and what I would recommend or what I, I would uh, model after is what they do in Oconto. In Oconto, what they do is they have an annual stickering process. The stickering process in Oconto says that for one year you get this sticky sticker if you have all of the safety equipment required by the city in order to operate these vehicles on our streets and it's good for that year and inside of that the education process starts about not only what safety equipment is is required in order to operate but also where you can operate and when you can operate for example i would not propose i would propose that these small vehicles do not belong on any four lane streets in the city of Green Bay. I think that invites an issue for potential safety and I would not wanna do that. Also, I would suggest as an example, 
that we would restrict operation in any school zones between normal load in and load out, out hours of the school. So roughly seven to 9 a.m. in the morning and three to five. And the ad allow small vehicles in, in the proximity of the school zone. So that's just a couple of examples of about how we could build in the, uh, the ed education that's out for these carts in the city of Green Bay. Okay, Alder Lefebvre, Alder Dorf, and then Alder Gerlach. So I just have a question. I'm not sure if Mike knows or who would know, but are golf carts <clears throat> considered ATVs or UTVs? I, I've had constituents saying, yeah. please never allow ATVs or UTVs on our city streets. So so I'm at a golf cart. What what is that considered? Well, I think I could offer this to Alderdorf. When when this was discussed two years ago, uh, Mr. Hansen, traffic engineer, uh, corrected my language of golf cart is not the most appropriate term. There are electric. There, there are all sorts of classifications from the state of Wisconsin, and I just use golf cart because that's the most commonly understood term. So to answer your question large variety, but they all fall under some sort of category as defined by the state of Wisconsin. Which is, what is the category? ETV? I don't know, but, but if your know. constituents okay. are asking, it's per, okay. I think golf has kind of fallen in that general category. I don't know what the official term is. Okay. My notes from years ago. It'd be nice to have that term because I, I think when you say golf cart, it kind of throws a few things out like, oh, I don't know. It doesn't seem safe enough to me, just that first blush. Alder Gerlach, unless Alder Dorf, do you have anything else? No, I just was curious. Yeah, Alder Gerlach. Thank you. I just have a question. I because uh, this is all new to me. I wasn't around two years ago when y'all talked about this, and I might uh, Mike might have said this, and I might have missed it. I'm just looking for a very basic, simple answer. What is the fundamental reason for doing this? What is the ad perceived advantage of it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so if I was going to look at it from a big stuff, it's connecting in the community. When you're in a golf, you're in the community or in the neighborhood, it's easy to connect with neighbors and it brings everybody a lot closer together. But if you look at the harder side of this, uh, the benefits are low energy consumption, low emissions, uh, easier to park, lower price tag to get into it, um, simple registration process, uh, very little noise. So there's a, there's a handful or more of really good complementary reasons why it would be a benefit to the community to have these cars on, on certain streets within Green Bay. Thank you. Uh, well, Mike, oh, one question I have, and then I'll the favor. Mike, I was going to ask, uh, you were talking about not having hearts or whatever term we will eventually come up with that'll describe it better. Uh, you know, on four lane roads and highways and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm just looking at, you know, all the Burnett's district and I, I know that area pretty well. And I'm just gonna say like, for example, like the Indian Trails subdivision, you know, you can, there's quite a few roads that you can go back and forth 20, 25 miles an hour in there. But once you get the Packer land and across the road, you know, that, that's chaos. So what's your take on that as far as, you know, going from neighborhood to neighborhood? It seems to me that this would be kind of limited in a geographic sense because you can't cross major roads. So what's your take there? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, and I've, actually, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this since two years ago. And so what I have proposed is even back two years ago is that these vehicles, small vehicles, can cross some of those major intersections, but only at controlled intersections and cannot operate on those roadways. So they can cross, but not operate. Okay. And that would be, of course, like uh, Alder Dorf mentioned, or, you know, or Alder Lefebvre, as far as seat belts, you'd have to have all the proper safety equipment in there before you could do that, I would think. Yeah, and I would look for um, the leadership in our police department to work with me or others on, on the committee to decide what the appropriate safety equipment is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that could be done in a very straightforward manner. And uh, okay. 
as part of the, the whole proposition. All right. Um, Lieutenant Allen, do you have any, can, then I'll get, oh, I'm sorry, all little favor. Can I just get Lieutenant Allen to weigh in a little bit and then I'll get you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what your thoughts are on this as far as police goes? Um, I guess right off the top, hang on there. Yeah. Yeah. I guess right off the top, um, yeah, I lived in Utah for quite a few years, not quite often. They, they have golf carts um, in North Ogden and Ogden area where I visit normally. Uh, as far as uh, to answer uh, Alderdorf's question of what type of vehicle they're considered, it's considered a low, uh, low speed vehicle. But I mean, the, the golf cart is a generic term, but the technical term is uh, considered a low speed vehicle. I believe the max speed on those can get up to about 30 miles an hour, and, and that's about it. So, uh, as far I, as crossing the major I, intersections, they can only uh, cross at controlled, and um, they cannot ride on any of those four laners. Um, and then a lot of people use them to go to and from uh, the like grocery stores, uh, like Dairy Queen stuff like that. Um, yeah, the. I guess for us it'd be, you know, where are we going to get the manpower to inspect all any of these? I don't know what the what the uh, amount of interest is in this, um, but we'd have to pull our, our traffic cops off the road to inspect it. Um, as far as the seatbelt safety equipment, none of those that I see when I'm out west, uh, none of them have seatbelts in them. It's just a low speed vehicle here to there. Um, and as far as traffic enforcement, they consider it a low speed vehicle, so it falls under the bicycle laws um, out there. So any any action or <laughs> citations they would take would be under a bicycle. Um, if I could uh, just jump in for just one second, Lieutenant. Yeah. This is yeah. Assistant City Attorney Mather. Go ahead. Um, the statutory definition of low speed vehicle specifically excludes uh, golf carts. Okay. So yeah, I, I've been looking since you guys brought it up. I've been looking to try to figure out what definition it might uh, fall under. Attorney Mather, before, Attorney Mather, before you continue, I was just I'm just wondering if we should close the floor or if there's anything other questions for Mike, ask that and oh, we can I, get to you. That's all I had. I was gonna turn it back. To Lieutenant Allen, I just wanted to clarify. Oh, no, that's fine, and, I, and I'm glad you're here because I think what we'll do is we'll we'll call upon you once we get back to our committee. Make a motion to close the floor. Okay. And then I like to speak. Okay. okay. Lafave and the seconded by who? Stevens. Stevens. Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. All right. All. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, might stick around. We still may open the floor again. So anyway, go ahead, Alder Lefebvre. Uh, that's my main sticking point is seatbelt. And I think maybe they need to wear a helmet too because I'm sorry, they're open, completely open. And I'm going to bring this up. Okay, we passed those scooters. And they're supposed, they are not supposed to be on the sidewalks. I have not seen it personally myself, but I was talking to someone and she says, she's driven around when she's gone downtown around they are on the sidewalks. She'll see people on those scooters, motorized scooters on the sidewalks, which is illegal. So now we're gonna put another thing for the police to have to try to take care of. I'm sorry, people don't, they don't follow the rules today. They speed on 25 mile an hour speed, speed limit streets. I have two in my district that are really, people are really having problems with speeding. I just. I don't know, I just don't like the mix. We're, we're not a small community. I can see this in a small community. I think it would definitely would work, but we're not. And you know, people, they're going to, if, like Hines Ra, they're up there and they wanna to go to somebody who's over on, um, I forgot what the name of the street is. They're gonna go down. They're, they're gonna go down the street they're not supposed to be on. And are the police always around going to catch them? No. And if somebody, if somebody hits one of these vehicles, I'm, I'm just afraid of what would happen. I just don't think they're safe. I'm sorry, I just don't think, our city is too big. And right. we just have people that just don't follow the rules. Okay. So, yeah. I'll call it, um, okay, I'll do the favor. All the Burnett, you had your hand raised. Yeah. yeah, real quick, I'll, I'll say that, you know, two years ago when the idea was first raised, I was, had the same concerns as all of the fave, but since then, 
I've been aware of more, more municipalities who have allowed this. And similar to the scooters, we did not have to uh, allow electric scooters on roadways, but the law department crafted one in, this, in that case for a private company to partner with Green Bay in order to provide them. So similarity with golf carts, as more you know, electric vehicles are, are common throughout the country and specifically Green Bay and areas around golf court, cart courses, that you will see more of these sorts of vehicles. And I agree, uh, you, your, your concerns are completely logical. Alder Lefebvre, I had the same thoughts, uh, but I don't think we need to necessarily reinvent the wheel here. There are recent examples where local municipalities have carried forward with it. The, the, the input from the public was mixed, but ultimately Swamico decided to move forward. The vehicles are regulated. They are required to have a permit and, you know, Perhaps there are a strain on our police resources. So it's worth looking into that. I, I don't think we need to go haphazardly into something. Uh, traffic engineer Hansen had prepared a lot of research into this already. So you know, in regards to what the motion is tonight, I guess what I would simply recommend out of respect to each of you is just make a motion to refer to traffic engineer Hansen and the city law department to look at the feasibility of, of doing this. And that's all they can they can already they've already done the research they've already completed the report they just haven't formally presented to the council yet so that's what that's what i would recommend you don't need to make a decision today just simply ask traffic Engi engineer hansen and the law department to update the information that they already have available okay. thank you for that alder burnett i kind of was thinking along those lines too and i was wondering if um, traffic engineer hansen you know a lot of times he'll have trial periods, you know, for, for road roadways and lights and stop signs and all sorts of things. I don't know if this falls into the same area, but I, I appreciate your uh, insight on that. He's already, done, that. He's already done the work, Alder yes. Story. He's I'll already done the work. Motion. Right. Alder Vanderleest? Yes, I'll make that motion to refer to uh, uh, our Mr. Hansen and, and the, the law department as well and uh, to move it forward that way. And then we'll have more information. We'll you know, be better equipped uh, to handle okay. and, and and make a decision. Thank you. Refer to staff, correct? So that would include, okay. Do we have a second? Alder Stevens, where are you? Oh, do we have a second? Yes. Second, second by Stevens, okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Nays? Did you Father Lefebvre, you said nay? No, I didn't say nay, no. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll let it go through, but yeah. That was, I don't that know. was a They'll trick. Really that was a They'll really okay. have to convince me, but okay. I'll, I'll let it go through, no. Well, thanks for the nay, nay. Thing. All right, all, any, any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Can we just say aye? Aye. aye. All right. Thanks, Alder Burnett, and thank you, Michael, for coming forward. Uh, we will look at this and uh, Give it, give it its due, fair due, if, if you will. All right, thank you very much. You bet. All right, Mary, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready for you, thank you. Okay, number seven, consideration of possible action on general ordinance number 2321, amending chapter 10, Green Bay Municipal Code relating to businesses, staff. Or I'm, gonna, I'm gonna refer this over to um, Assistant City Attorney Mather. Okay. Attorney Mather. Hello again. Hello. Um, so this is largely in service of both the recodification and the fee schedule. Um, when we created both, um, we realized there's a bunch of things listed in um, chapter 10, which contains all of our business licenses, which we do not, um, it contains a bunch of licenses we do not issue anymore. Um, in, including a lot of things that are regulated by um, the uh, health department, which Green Bay used to have and is now at, um, at Brown County. So um, it's mostly just reorganizing everything and um, taking out everything that no longer applies to, um, because we don't, um, we don't issue those licenses anymore. Or um, you may notice that there are um, several liquor license um, 
references removed and that is only because alcohol beverages are in their own chapter now okay. so those fees are all listed in a separate place so they were just repetitive in two places so we're just cleaning it up um, okay. I won't go into too much detail, but if anybody has any questions, I am happy to answer. I do. I, I had one quick question, and I'll hold it a fave. Um, Attorney Mather, you know, I'm just looking at all the ones that were crossed off and then some of the ones that are added. So you're saying that the whatever the city has here is one thing and, and uh, the county would take care of the others? Is that what you were saying? Or Not necessarily. Um, some of them, like um, based Health um, retail food market, some of these, those things would all be the health department. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them are things that the city of Green Bay just doesn't issue anymore. Like um, nobody in the clerk's office knew what closing out sales were. So okay. we don't license anymore. It's not in our system. Nobody knows what it is. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make so sure that, them, okay, go ahead. Yep, some of them are done by the county, but some of them are just completely not applicable anymore. Okay. Um, same right. circus carnivals, um, that's encompassed under our special, we don't have a um, specific license, but it's under the special events license now. So some of it's just in different parts of our code too. Okay. All right, well, that helps. Uh, Aldo Lefebvre. Yeah, I have a question then. Can you tell me about the residential building contract is that somewhere in the code? Because I definitely would want that in somewhere where they have to have a license because I know my uh, good friend, yep. this is a number of years uh, ago, she was really ripped off by somebody. I, I don't know if that's part of that. Go ahead. So that, there is a reference to that um, that is being removed. Um, those licenses are actually issued by the state. So um, the city of Green Bay doesn't issue them. So um, we they have, do that. They had yeah. to have something with the yep. city. But the state, um, the state has created its own system of regulations now. So we no longer do it at the city level um, because it would be duplicative. Yeah. I, 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 really, I really don't that. like that because I mean it's going to be hard for somebody to go through the state. It'd be better if the city itself had that in there. It's so easy for the state to, I mean, the city then to pull someone's license and say that you can no longer operate if, if it's ripping somebody off fraudulent because we've had a lot of problems with that years ago. I remember that. And uh, I, I'd hate to see this happen again. If you hmm. let these uh, fly by night people and all this going on, then somebody's really going to have trouble trying to get some uh, redress on this. I just like to make a comment, Mark. Whenever okay, well, do, I'm do you want to answer? I'm asking yeah, ask. Attorney. I'll get you next, uh, Attorney Mather, and then I'll have Alder Vanderlees. I think Alder Stevens wanted to say something. Sure. Sure, sure. I guess the the remedy is always against the specific contractor. So you could always um, sue somebody for if there's like a, a breach of contract or something like that, or they do a poor job. Um, there are also safeguards at the state level that you can report um, bad, like contractors who do a bad job or, or who may be trying to operate without a license or something like that. Um, so that's all, those mechanisms still exist. Um, the, the difficulty is that when the state decides that something is of statewide importance, then, and then they choose to legislate on that issue, the city can't we can't legislate on it anymore. We can't usurp what the, we can't try to override what the state is doing or do something in addition to or different from what the state is doing unless the legislature specifically gives us authority to do that. And under these licensing schemes, I'm sorry, licensing uh, structures, I did not mean schemes. Um, they, <laughs> um, you know what you they meant. don't give the they don't give the uh, municipalities that authority anymore. So Alder Lefebvre, I think one of the things you know the state has yeah. taken over a number of things locally. So we as this is not the only thing. It sounds to me like they're covering their bases here. And I, actually, Alder Vanderlees, being a business owner, I'd like to hear you know Alder Vanderlees the, the chime in on this. 
as far as your thoughts. Okay, Mark. Uh, I'm licensed through the state of Wisconsin for a master electrician license, and I'm also licensed, my business is licensed through the state of Wisconsin. And, you know, a lot of these people that come from out of state, uh, they're not licensed, they're not, they're not bonded. People, you know, should be aware that if you're hiring a contractor, you should check if they're licensed, bonded, and insured. And, uh, you know, check the, you know, what type of references that they have. And, you know, that's how they run into a lot of problems with people that are, you know, milking people out of their money or bilking people out of their money because they don't have any of the credentials. They don't have the, uh, they don't have the expertise, but they're, they're here to collect the money and, and run on and move on. So I think the state has, has uh, regulating the contractors that are legitimate. The ones that aren't legitimate, they're lawbreakers. And, and that's the sad part, you know, that a lot of people get took by people that are not licensed, not bonded, not insured, and not qualified to do the work. So that's some of the problem. And But, you know, most legitimate businesses are licensed, you know, both with the state as far as their, their uh, if they're a licensed plumber through the state and also their business is licensed through the state of Wisconsin. Those are good indications that, you know, it's a legitimate type business. So that that's what that's what I found in my in my career and working on both, you know, federal jobs and, you know, with regular people that are, you know, citizens that, you know, homeowners and what have you, that the, the license criteria is, you know, that you find somebody that's, uh, you know, holds all the credentials that you need so you can move forward with your project. Thank you. Well, the vendor lease real quick, are you saying that, let the buyer beware? You know, it's like yeah. anything else, when you have a job done, you, you know, the buyer needs to do some research as well. You know, you can't feign the ignorance. You have to, you have to go out there and make sure that they're, like you said, licensed and bonded and all sorts of things with that. So that, that's part of, that's partly on the buyer as well. And I'll, I'll mention one other thing that if, if you're if you're doing a job in the city of Green Bay, you do have to pull out a permit for the job, regardless that I'm licensed through the state of Wisconsin. You do have to pull out a permit and, and have it inspected as well. And, and if you're doing a federal job, have federal people inspecting it, state people inspecting it, and local people inspecting it. So uh, just because you're licensed through the state of Wisconsin, you still have to follow the criteria of, of the local municipality. If it's De Pere, Ashwaubenon, Green Bay, Green well, Bay is, you know, has a building department, electrical department, plumbing department. It all has to clear the, clear the, you know, the criteria as far as you're, you've been inspected and you know you can move forward. Right, that's that's a very good point. And I, you know, I, we're, we're, we dealt with that, that the person that took down three city trees, and I, I think the anger that I felt was that the the contractor that did it should know better. But obviously. You know, you know what I mean. You you got to check. You got to check the references and all the, all of the other things. Father Lefebvre, do you have anything else? No, I just I just hope that yeah, uh, yeah we're not leaving people in the lurch because yeah. like I said, it, it was bad years ago. No, that's really true, bad. and I I think all the Vanderleys did bring up some very good points. So there there's some mm -hmm. checks and balances, and I think okay. the buyer, buyer needs to be aware too. Alder Stevens, you're you're raising hand. What do you what do you say? Thank you. I would You're like welcome. to thank Attorney Mather along with the council, uh, the, the plot department for looking at this ordinance and making the amendment. So I would like to go forward with approval on this amendment. Okay. We have a motion by Stevens. Do we have a second? A second. Second by Vanderleest. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. Thank you for the input, Attorney Mather, uh, on this. Thank you. So I'll wait for Mary. Thank you so much, I'm ready. Okay, uh, informational, the liquor violation report for September 27th, 2021. Uh, my favorite part of the meeting. Uh, we have no liquor law violations report this month. Okay, I, uh, Lieutenant Allen, I did notice a few things and uh, kind of going over the entire year. So that's something that above and beyond. I mean, they just showed some things like, well, it was 2020, 2020, but you're talking about, I thought I saw 2021 liquor violations too. Maybe I didn't. Those only show all the ones up to date, but just in this time. Well, yeah, during this time frame, there isn't anything, but okay, all right. Yeah, just yeah, okay. since the last meeting, there's nothing since then. All right, 
Yep. Motion to receive and place on file. Okay. Uh, by Van der Roos, receive and place on <laughs> file. Seconded by Lafave. All in, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Okay. That passes unanimously. Uh -oh. so our, before we the next uh, protection of policy meeting will be, looks like, what do we got here? Do we have October? October 10th, 9, 11. 11th. October 11th at 5.30, okay. All right, anything else? Do we uh, have a motion to adjourn? Do adjourn. Motion by Van seconded by Steven. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And again, all this goes to City Council on October 5th, Tuesday. So thank you for your input. Yeah, Have a wonderful job. evening. Thank you.